Okay, so after yesterday's unpleasantness, um, I, I uh, and I'm sorry about the, um, the, I'm sorry about the, the thing about your parents and my, and my, my child. So um, we're going to talk about different words. So what, what I was trying to get at with that unpleasantness yesterday was that I've got a lot of different names that I use in different circumstances, and so does. So do these parts of these equations. So we have two, uh, we have two, just leave it there. We have two forms of equations that you guys have seen so far. Y equals mx plus b and y equals kx. Now there's another one y'all learned, but we're past that, okay? Um, there's y equals x plus b. We are not going to be using that because that's a sixth grade thing, okay? So, but this number in front of the x, okay, we've got lots of different names for it, okay? So we're Okay, so we've got all these different words that mean the number in front of the the number in front of the letter, the coefficient of x. So actually, that's the first one we're going to write down is coefficient, coefficient of x. Now, again, we've talked about how we might use other letters, but in general, when these two forms, we're looking at the number in front of the x. Um, we also have called it. So that's kind of like one thing we called it. We called it rate of change. Okay, we called it rate of change. Rate of change is what we use in a table. It's also delta y over delta x. Okay, so that's one uh, another thing that we've called it. So we called it rate of change, which is our um, let me zoom in a little bit, which is our um, which is what we use on a table. It's also delta y over delta x. All right, so that's one, another one that we've called it. We've also called it unit rate. And unit rate is how much for one? Okay, and we actually see unit rate a lot in um, like real world situations. Okay, in real world situations. We also did um, okay, we called it the constant variation or um, I'm not going to write constant of again, but the constant of proportionality. Let me move that up. Proportionality. Too lazy for that. And that was K which is y over x, okay? Now, I want to point out really quickly that the constant of proportionality, y, over, y equals k over x, this is only, this box is only direct variation, okay? So now that we've, we've talked about all these different ways that we talk about slope, now we're going into our final form. Final form, okay? And that final form is slope. Okay? And slope is represented by the letter M. Okay? Why is it represented by the letter M? I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to lie to you. I Googled it once to try to figure that out. Did not get a clear answer. Um, basically, what I heard, what they, what most of what I saw was that was the next letter that wasn't being used. <laughs> Every other letter was being used. So I was like, okay. Um, the way I think of it is M tells me how to move, so how I move from point to point on the line. So that's how I think of it. So I'm going to write move because the slope tells me how to move. I start at a point and the slope tells me how much I go up and how much I go right or how much I go down and how much I go, it tells me how I move to get to the next point. Um, and we're going to learn today about rise over run. And that's what we're going to focus on today, rise over run. That is our kind of like our final form. And I'm going to be honest with you, you could literally use any of these. You could use any of these names for slope. But as you can see, slope is the one that I use the most. I call it slope all the time. I rarely call it unit rate. I rarely call it rate of change. I almost always call it slope. I even call K the slope. I'm not going to lie to you, and I'm sure I'm going to get some heat for that, but it's all slope to me, okay? So let's flip to our notes page that we just, so um, nobody can tell, right? Nope, how are they going to know, right? Exactly, so nobody will know. 
Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about today is we're going to talk about four different types of slope, and we're going to talk about how to find slope on a graph. Okay, I'm going to write down the five steps. So just go ahead and make yourself five little numbers because you're going to need to fit one, two, three, four, five steps <laughs> above that graph. Okay, so do what you got to do. They're not big. They're in fact very short. So if you can kind of see that, they're not they're not going to go very far at all. Okay. Okay. So we're going to write the steps down, and then I'm going to go through a couple of problems and show you how to use them. All right. So let me zoom in so we can see this a little better. Step one: plot points, draw line. Okay. Plot points, draw line. That is a D. Okay. Plot points, draw a line. Okay. Step two is sign the line. Sign the line. Okay. So step one, plot points, draw a line. Step two, sign the line. Step three, make your slope. Triangle, and I'm going to try and make that. So I want to make that triangle look like a right triangle with a little little thing in the corner. Normally, I just make them little little equilateral triangles, but this one I want to be a right triangle because we're making right triangles. Okay. Number four, find your rise and run. And number five, calculate. Rise over run. Okay. Take a minute to write that down if you have not done so already. All right. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to talk about slope from a graph. So we're going to right over here, we're going to write some stuff down to kind of help us understand what, what we're actually doing when we find slope with rise over run. So M, which means slope, we find it with rise over run, okay? So now, when I think about rising and running, rising sounds like it goes up and down, like an elevator goes up and down, right? So which one is that, vertical or horizontal? Okay, is anybody confused about which one's vertical and which one's horizontal? Because I get confused about it all the time. Okay, so here's how I think about it, and this is a little embarrassing, all right? The only one I really know for sure is horizontal, and then vertical is the other one, okay? So whenever I think of horizontal, I get a vivid mental image and a sound memory in my head every single time, and this is what I see. I see that opening scene from The Lion King where they have the sun rising, and it's like all shimmering, right? It's shimmering, and and he says that, right? And like, and like the sun is shimmering in the sky as it rises out of the horizon. Okay, the horizon is that flat line that the, the, the whoop that it's rising out of. So I'm in my head, I'm imagining the sun rising out of the horizon. Horizon horizontal goes this way. Vertical is the other one, and it goes up and down. Okay, so rise is vertical change. Remember, change is a triangle, so I'm gonna get my shorthand on and write it as a triangle. Okay. So then run, because on planet Earth, we are tethered to the Earth by gravity, we run along the ground. So we run or on a horizontal axis. So horizontal change, okay? So knowing that vertical goes up and down, which axis is our vertical axis, X or Y? It's Y. So that would make vertical change how my Y is changing. Pretty small. And it would make my horizontal change, which one's the horizontal change going to be? Horizontal is X, right? So that's going to be my change in X. Well, look at that. That's rate of change right there. Okay? So what this means is that when we find slope using rise over run, we're actually finding rate of change. We're just doing it visually instead of mathematically. So instead of, instead of like saying, you know, y minus y, you know, like doing the little, the thingies, the, the carrots, I'm actually counting, 
counting the vertical change and counting the horizontal change, and then I just put them in a, in a fraction. Okay, so it's basically it's the same thing. It's just visual instead of mathematical. Okay, so some of you are going to say to me, "Do I have to do this?" No. But I'm going to tell you right now, if I ever give you, like for example, like on tonight's homework, if I give you if I give you a bunch of graphs that are already graphed, rise over run is your fastest, most efficient tool to use. Okay? If I give you two points, it maybe isn't the most efficient tool. If I give you a table, it's not the most efficient tool. But if I give you a graph line, it is the, it is the best tool. And uh, I'm not going to make you, like, if I ask you to go dig a hole in the backyard and you want to dig it with a spoon, I I'm not going to tell you not to do that, but... Just know I already gave you a shovel. I'm going to give you all the tools you need. Because remember, we're building a foundation. So I'm, I, we're, we're, we're building like a toolbox that we can use in our later classes. This is one of the things in your toolbox. Okay? If you choose not to use it, that is your business. I'm not going to hold it against you. But I want you to know about it. Okay? So let's start. So I'm going to give you two points. We're going to start with positive slope. Okay? Positive slope. All right. So with positive slope, I'm going to give you two points I want you to plot. Negative 1, 2, and 1, 4. Okay, I want you to plot those two points. So take a minute and plot. Oops, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, when we connect our points, make sure you always connect the line. So you're not just connecting the points. We're drawing a line all the way through the grid. Okay? And we want to, again, remember, algebra is all about being careful and precise. So we want to make sure that we point, plot those points as precisely as we can, carefully, and that our line <coughs> is as close to straight, as, I mean, as close to on those points as we can get it. Now, again, you know, we're graphing. So, I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but let's try to get it as close as we can. Okay, so what do we notice about this line? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's do step two. Step two is sign the line. So when you sign an important document, where do you sign it? You sign on the line, right? Okay, so I'm not going to sign on the line, but I sign above the line, right? I don't sign below the line. That's weird, right? They put the X on the line and I sign below it. Like, what's wrong with me? Okay, so I sign above the line. I'm going to sign mine a little bit above the line just because I, I have some other stuff I'm going to do here. So I'm signing my name above the line. Y'all all do that too. And then I'll tell you, talk to you about what it means. You're like, why am I doing this? Just just go with it. There's a method to my madness. Yeah. That's my name. You don't you write your name because I don't want I don't want to find out that you're like what if somebody's like, why are you always writing Maggie above your lines? Well, because my eighth grade math teacher told me to. Well, you're in college now. Like I don't need that. Okay, so let's you write your own name. Okay. Unless you just want to remember me forever, in which case I'm okay with that. Um, so I wrote my name. Which way is my name going? Is it going uphill or downhill? Uh, it's going uphill, right? That's how I know it's positive slope. It's going uphill. Let me zoom in on this. Uh, oh, my God. Well, don't. We sign on top of the line. And if you have to turn the thing to sign, then you're doing it wrong. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to be critical, but you're doing it wrong. Okay? Also, another phrase that you might use is increasing... from left to right, okay? So we're increasing from left to right. So now we're going to actually start finding slope. So this is so this is what I meant. Watch this, watch this one, and then I'll give you time to kind of copy it down. Can you, can you guys see over there? Okay. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. This is how I draw my, if you had drawn it down here, that would have been fine as long as you did rise first and then run, okay? And now for the highlighters. Now, you're going to use two highlighters, and we're going to use these highlighters for something else similar later. So I don't care which color you use for rise and which color you use for run, as long as you use the same color all the time. So if you decide that pink is rise, pink always has to be rise. Yeah, because remember, we're trying to peg it in your memory. So when you think, okay, every, so then every time you go to highlight the rise, you'll grab the pink marker because that's the one you do. 
So I want you to always be using the same color. So I'm going to highlight the rise. And I'm using, so I'm going to actually, so I'm going to use pink for my rise and blue for my run. You don't have to use the same colors I do. You just got to use the same ones every time, okay? And so now I'm going to highlight my run, okay? So I need to identify, so, it's, so the step now says find your rise and run, okay? So let me write rise over run. So my rise is pink, which I highlighted. My run is blue, which I also highlighted, okay? So this is where, this is where rise over run goes wrong. This is where it goes off the rails, okay? Because what some of y'all, okay, so there's two things that happen. I'm going to tell you about both of them. First of all, there's the humps, okay, the humps. So some of y'all, when you count your slope, you like, to, you like to draw the humps, okay? So you're like one, two, three, four, five, six. It moved six, right? Because there are six humps, okay? I am a million percent okay with the humps, but this is what I'm not okay with. Let me show you this. You're like one, two, three, four, five. You're drawing crazy humps. If you're humps, you have to, I'm, I'm going to keep saying humps until you get tired of it and then you never want to hear me say it again. Fix the humps, okay? Fix your humps, all right? Make sure that every time you land, you land on another line. Otherwise, the humps don't work. Because here, we lost a hump. We're supposed to have five humps. We only got, we only, we're supposed to have six humps. We only got five humps. Where'd the other hump go? Hump. Okay, so I'm okay with you doing this, doing the strategy of, of counting how many hops there are. Just make sure that you're very careful about it. The other thing you can do is what I do, and what I do is I count the spaces. So like, like kind of like the units, how long is it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six units long, okay? And this one is one, two units long, so two squares. How many squares long are the sides? So that's what I do. Okay? So this one is six squares. In, well, the rise is six squares. The run is two squares. So I'm... Huh? Not yet. Okay, so I'm going to put my rise, which is six, over my run, which is two. And yes, you can just divide it. But here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to practice because... We're not always going to use the fraction function on our calculators, but I want you to practice using that, that, that fraction function so that you get good at it and it's natural. So remember, fractions are alpha y equals, sorry about that, alpha y equals enter. Okay? So I'm going to put 6 on top and 2 on bottom and hit enter. And it tells me that the answer is 3. So remember, alpha y equals. Everybody should be trying this because I want everybody to be like ridiculously awesome at using the calculator, okay? So my answer is three, which is my slope. Now that took a really long time, but remember, we're not always gonna take this much time to find slope. Yes, sir? It is rate of change, except we're doing it visually instead of with the table. Yeah, you could totally put these two points in a table. Okay. But I want you to know how to do this. So you're going to practice this. Even though you want to put it in a table, I want you to practice this, at least for tonight. So I want you to just, just, just one night of rise over run, and then you can get your table on. Okay, yes. <laughs> it's raining. It's raining. Okay, all right, let's do the next one. If this was positive slope, what do you think the next one's going to be? Negative, Negative slope. Okay, negative slope. I want you to plot these two points. Three, negative three, and negative five, one. Okay, so what I want you to do is right now I want you guys to plot the points, draw the line, sign the line. So do the first three steps. Okay, so did we get negative, did we, so this is negative slope. So what do we notice about this one? What's it doing? It's going downhill or it's decreasing from left to right, okay? So this time it's going downhill. And so why is this important? So why is signing the line important? For this problem, as soon as I sign the line and I see that it's going downhill, 
If it's a multiple choice test, I'm going to immediately cross off anything that's positive. If it's a bubble grid, I'm immediately going to bubble in the negative. I'm going to write a negative and I'm going to bubble it in. If it's a free response question, I'm going to I'm going to put a negative already in that box because I know the answer's got to be negative. And if I don't, I'm likely to forget it. I forget it all the time. That's one of the biggest mistakes I make. When I make mistakes on y'all's tests, that's one of the biggest mistakes I make when I when I key your tests. Okay? So if you know if you do this first and you address the sign of the slope first, you won't forget it. Okay? So, let's draw our triangle. Now, again, I don't care if you draw it down and right. So, like, I, this time I'm doing mine below the line, I guess, just to mess with y'all. Um, and the reason I do that is because I always go from left to right, and I always do, you, all, you have to do rise first. So, I always, this time I'm going to rise and then run, but I always go from left to right. You don't have to do that, but you have to rise first before you run. Okay? And then I'm going to get my highlighter on. That's okay. Well, you still have the same answer? No. Oh. Mm -mm, you sure won't. You're like, why would you say that, Mrs. Steele? Mm -hmm. So, like, so I, know my, I know my line is negative. So I'm going so to put a negative right away. I'm going to put a negative right there where I'm supposed to write it down. There are four units here. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units horizontally. And then in my calculator it goes. Negative four over eight reduces to negative one half. So the slope of this one is negative one half. Okay? Hmm? Hmm? You can put 0.5, negative 0.5. Okay, that's a great question. You could, so the question was, can I just put negative 0.5? You can just put negative 0.5. But since slope is telling us how to move, if we leave it as a fraction, I can find any point on this line by going down one, right two. So if I go down one, right two, I'm on the line. Down one, right two, I'm on the line. Down one, right two. So I can find any point on this line by using these directions. Vertically, I'm going to move negative 1. Horizontally, I move 2. So this gives me the directions to find the next point on the line. If you put 0. 0.5, you're going to go down half and over 1. Like, I don't want to do that, huh? How do you know, like, how big is the triangle? You make it go between these two points. And if, it, if you're having trouble making the triangle, that's a good question. If you're having trouble making the triangle, just take the edge of something. Take a corner, line it up with the two points, that's where your triangle should go. So it should make a right triangle and the, 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 the points that you have on the line should be the ends of the legs. Okay, we do have two more, two more, two more lines to do. But they're really easy. What's your question? X. Okay, that's another thing and that's a really good point. We've been doing so much Y then X, Y then X, Y then X. A bunch of people, including myself, forget how to plot points. We still plot points x then y. Okay? So let's look at this one. I want to show you, I want to, we're going to do these pretty quickly because we are actually going to spend a whole day on these two types of slope, zero slope and undefined slope. Okay? So zero slope, the two points I want you to plot are negative 1, 3 and 1, 3. So plot those two points for me, and then we're going to have a little conversation about them. Plot them and then connect them with a line. You're right, though. It does look gross outside. Because I'm inside all day and it's not too long and flowy for my shirt, my pants. You can't have like flowy shirt and flowy pants. It looks weird. You got to have, you know. Okay. So did you guys get this same line as I did? What do we notice about this one? Which way is it going? Is it going uphill or downhill? It's going neither. 
neither uphill nor downhill. You can put neither, just neither if you want to. Okay. What else do you notice about this one? What, do you, what can we not do that we're supposed to do in step, two, step three? There, we can't make a triangle. Okay. Which one's missing, rise or run? Rise. There's no rise. Okay. There's no rise. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So what is my rise? If there's no rise, what am I going to put? Zero. Zero. And my run is two. In my calculator, if I put, not yet, if I put zero over two, zero. I get zero. <laughs> o or zero. Hmm? A horizontal line will be yes. Yeah, and this is a horizontal line. Okay. Uh huh. Over one, up three. Over one, up three. No. It's why. Okay, let's do let's do net let's do um um undefined slope real quick. Focus up. Undefined slope. Okay. So let's put these two points on the graph and see what they look like. One, three, and one, negative two. What, does anybody have a theory about what they think it'll look like before they plot them? That's the only one we haven't done yet, right? The only one we haven't done is the one that goes up and down. So yeah, I'm with you on that one. Sorry, this was... Okay, that's a horizontal line. What kind of line do we have now? We have a vertical line. Okay. So what does this one not have? It has no run. So when I highlight this one, all I can highlight is the rise. Okay. So again, if I put rise over run, well, I rise 5 and I run nothing. So, when I put, so my rise is 5, my run is 0. Well, when I put that in my calculator, 5 over 0 gives me divide by 0. Divide by 0 is an illegal operation in math. I cannot divide by 0. So let's think about this. Let's pretend I brought no cookies today, and I want to share my no cookies with all of you. How many cookies do you all get? You all get none. I took my nothing and I shared it with you. We all got nothing. Now, what if I have 25 cookies and I put them into groups of zero. Exactly, like we all went, what? Because if I put them in groups of zero, I put them somewhere, but where did they go? They're in groups of zero. How many groups are there? None. What's in the groups? Nothing but the cookies are gone. It doesn't make sense. We can't do it, okay? So, because, because this, focus up, because this is an illegal operation. It's an operation that we can't compute. We call it undefined. This operation is undefined. Okay, so we're going to call this undefined. Now, the last thing I want you to write down at the bottom, we never say no slope. We never say no slope because every line has slope. It might be zero, it might be undefined, it might be a, an integer, positive or negative, but it always has slope. We don't say no slope to mean undefined or zero. Okay? All right, that was a long video, but... <laughs>